Alright, so we can post it. Tell everyone that it'll be another couple of minutes. Uh, nope. Yeah. You, you finished setting up the stream, you're just posting it, right? Yep. Okay. There's no point in telling them anything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What if yeah. you just did nothing and just like sat up here and looked like you were like working? Yeah, that would be the whole time. Yeah, they would like to stick around at, like nine. <laughs> it's like ten o'clock. We're like still just. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, it's already started actually. So like. Uh, you're good to go. <laughs> All right. What's up, guys? Thanks for being patient. Um. I'm Nick, talking about game dev. <laughs> All right, so one of the hardest things about game development is getting started, right? Like, how am I going to make the next Flappy Bird? Well, the good news is it's both as easy as you think and as hard as you think. It's as easy as you think because all you have to do is just make tons of unfinished games, and eventually you'll make something that's pretty cool. Um, it's also as hard as you think because it's the hard part is in, in not stopping, right? Like there's a bunch of tutorials online, but how do I build my very specific game concept? Um, so yeah, I mean, in short, it's just about making lots and lots of things. Um, and the, the simpler the idea you have at first, the better, because when you're starting out, you don't really know how to do much. So being able to make something with what you know, you'll like sort of get this one tool, and then you add it to your tool belt. And now you can build even more games. So the more unfinished games or finished games that you make, the better you'll get at making new ones. So anyone have any ideas what makes a good game idea? No, nobody. OK, this guy. What? Yeah, OK, so he said something competitive that you could brag about your score. Anyone else ideas? You could play it on the toilet. Play it on the toilet. That's actually a great idea, right? Because a lot of mobile games people pick up for like 30 seconds, play it while they're on the toilet, put it down. Um, and so along those same lines, like what is the most simple component of a game? We're talking about the core mechanic. It's this thing. It's this action that you do repeatedly <laughs> over and over. Um, so if it's, if it's Flappy Bird, you know, the action is tapping to, to fly. If it's Super Mario, it's like jumping and, and squashing enemies. It's just this thing that's inherently fun. And how do you know if a core mechanic is good or not? You really just got to feel it out, right? Like, you, you got to test it. And it might you might have had this great idea in your head, but then you go to build it, and you realize, oh, it's actually not as fun as I thought it was. So build the, build the mechanic quickly, test it out, try it, maybe show it to some friends. And you got to just keep iterating on that. Um, so it's a lot of iteration, just a lot of making unfinished games, right? If anyone's made games before, how many people have? All right, just one guy. How many unfinished games have you had? 15? I probably have upwards of like 50 or something. So yeah, it's all about just making lots of things. Um, so how many people here are CS majors, right? Yeah, me too. Well, just graduated. But so in CS, does anyone know who this is? Extra credits if you do. It's Donald Knuth, right? So optimization, <laughs> premature optimization is the root of all evil, right? So we, we talk in CS classes about like the most efficient data structures. Um, in games, it's actually the opposite. You just want to build the thing as quickly as possible, because it's much easier to make a fun game fast than it is to make a fast game fun, right? So throw out all the concepts you've learned in class. Just build the thing as quickly as possible. Um, so these are some programs that I've used in the past. Uh, I started learning how to program with GameMaker. Super cool program. You can make real stuff with it. Um, but if you're looking for more of the industry standard, that's Unity. Uh, the only thing that Cocos 2DX has going for it is that it's free, like as an open source. You can build cross-platform games for no money, but the documentation is very sparse, and you have to like C++. Um, so if you don't really know what to start with, GameMaker is a good choice, and we'll be getting to that in just a few minutes. Um, here are some resources corresponding to each of the above. The GameMaker forms are great. Like Seriously take advantage of those. Um, because people who have been doing this longer than you probably know the answer quicker. So 
Um, yeah, so let's let's just make something because we got started kind of late. I don't want to dwell on this too long. So the Bitly link is th flap. Uh, just go there and download all this stuff. And they get their news, which no one cares about. Okay. So then it open? Yeah, it's open. That's the one. Where is it? Oh, this is it. Okay. Yep. My bad. It's uh this one. Is it all set? Uh, Looks good, right? Yes. Cool. Uh, is there any way to zoom in on this thing? Might be a little hard to see. Can everyone see that, or is that too small? Maybe zoom in here. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and in the meantime, everyone open up Game Maker, get the, the resources. Uh, Worse. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Uh, cool. Okay. Right. Sweet. All right. So does everyone have Game Maker open? We're ready to make the thing. Yeah. Thumbs up. Cool. All right. So this is Game Maker. Um, it looks very empty at first. So. <laughs> um, but the first thing you want to do is so to import those assets that I just sent you, click on this little Pac-Man looking thing. And then we're just going to call it uh, sbird or something. Uh, so you click load. And then you can actually just grab all of these or one of them. It's fine. Um, so then click edit. And then we're going to import the rest. So it's all four of these. And if you check this show preview button, it should look like that. So he's kind of just like flapping there hanging out. Um, so then we're going to hit OK. And so in Game Maker, every sprite, which is like the image that gets displayed, has a corresponding object, which is this blue ball. So click on that. And then we're just going to call it like O bird or something. And then right here, change the sprite to sprite bird. Um, so the basic component to every game is every game has to have at least one room. So that's the thing right next to object. We're going to create that now. Um, and so this is our room. But we want it to look a little bit more like the phone. So we're going to click Settings and change the resolution to 480 by 320. Or other way around, sorry. <laughs> 320 by 480. Um, so that looks sort of like a phone, right? And then we're going to click back to Objects and place our bird anywhere in the middle. Um, and so hit OK. And if we hit Run, you will see our beautiful game. It's just this bird flying around. Cool. So that's that's like the hello world of, of Game Maker. Um, so now the first thing that we can do is we can make him like actually flap, right? So when you press spacebar, he'll. Sorry, I got some questions. Yeah. So you just you just click the the sprite, um, this Pac-Man thing, right? Um, and then just click load sprite, and you can just. Select the, the image of the bird. Did that help back there, too? Cool. Um, and if, if you need help, like feel free to ask people around you, too. So right, so let's make it so that we can, we can actually fly with the bird. So we're going to open up the bird object and then click Add Event. Right. So these are all the different actions in game that might happen. And you can set a bunch of code to run when one of these things happens. Um, so create happens when the game starts. Well, rather, it happens when the room starts. But So we're going to click Add Event, Create. Um, 
And then down here under control, we're going to click this, and we're going to drag in one of these code blocks. Um, and so now we can attach some behavior to when this happens, right? So I'm just going to say set the gravity to 2, meaning 2 pixels per frame. Uh, and we hit OK. We can run it again, and you can see what happens. He's just going to fall now. It's nothing particularly interesting. <laughs> um, cool. So then we need to make it so that when you press space, this bird jumps, right? So we're going to add a new event, key press, space, and then add a block of code. Um, so there's, there's two components for speed. It's h speed and v speed. For jumping, it's v speed. Um, and negative pixels are moving up towards the top of the screen. So it's 0, 0 at the top left and room width, room height at the bottom right. So we're just going to set the v speed to negative 18 or something. Um, so uh, run it again. And you can see like already you, you wind up doing this a bunch. But now when I'm pressing space, he's like flying around. Um, so cool. So far, so good. Cool. Um, so now what else? Uh, all right, well, let's add some more assets, right? So we're going to add some pipes now. That's the main thing in Flappy Bird. Um, so if we go down, we're going to import this pipe down sprite, and we're just going to call it S pipe down. OK. Import a new sprite. Um, we're going to grab all three of the pipe-related things. So there's pipe down, pipe up, and pipe. Oops. We can get to sounds later. Um, and then pipe is the last one. So the convention that I'm using is just S, lowercase, and then capital, camel case, the rest of the thing. Um, and so those are all the, the three things. So now we're going to create a pipe object. So we click on the, the object thing. We call this O pipe. Up. So this is going to be the pipe that's facing upwards. Um, so one of the things about pipes is they actually have a dynamic height. If you can tell, this image here just is like the stub of the pipe. But we need to draw the pipe all the way down to the bottom of the room. So we can actually attach a little bit of draw logic to the pipe in order to do that. Um, so we're going to add a new event. Uh... <laughs> OK. OK, so we're going to add a new event. Um, I definitely don't recommend the Mac version of GameMaker, but I guess that's a conversation for another time. OK, so add event, draw. Then we're going to attach a little code block. So just a little bit on all these other things on the right side here. Um, all of these actions are things that you can just drag in. But every action has a corresponding code block that you can use. So I'm just using the code blocks because um, I think it's a little bit easier. It gives you more flexibility. But if you don't even want to write code, even though this isn't that much code, you can, you can do everything by drag and drop at first. Um, OK, so we're going to add a thing to draw. So we're going to say, all right, we want to draw the sprite s pipe up 0, which is the first frame of that sprite, at our x and y position. Um, so then if I, if I place this pipe in the room, you'll see it just sort of shows this like question mark thing. That's because I didn't set a sprite on it. I'm actually just drawing it through code. So what that'll look like is this. We've got like the pipe stub there. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to programmatically draw the rest of the pipe. So the way to do that is you just create a new variable. And then we're going to do a for loop. Um, I'm not going to explain what for loops are for this talk, but um, worth learning about. So we're going to say, as long as this position is less than the room height, increment it by 1, and then draw this, this um, S pipe, which is just that pipe thing, at our Y, Y position. So now that's going to move every pixel one at a time and draw the rest of the pipe. Um, all right, 
We're going to run that. Cool. <laughs> All right, uh, the one for Mac is seriously buggy. Anyway, hopefully third time's the charm. Nope. Um, well, I can keep doing it from memory um, without looking at it, but believe me, that'll draw a pipe. <laughs> um, so uh, can anyone verify that that's a pipe? Yeah, cool. All right, so that's our pipe. Um, so now we're going to make the same exact thing except going the other direction. Um, rather than making a new object, I can actually just copy the old one. So we're going to say duplicate on pipe up, call it O pipe down, um, editing this, this draw code here. So now instead of up, we're going to draw the down portion. And instead of this piece, we're going to say the other direction, right? So subtracting one, going all the way up to the top of the room. Um, and that's your down pipe. Um, and then you can you can add it to the room again, just above the other one. And this should. <laughs> I'm not sure what the right answer is here. I'm just going to restart real quick. Sure. <laughs> All right, cool. I don't know what happened. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> um, maybe this will fix it. I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. I, I can keep going. Um, I'm assuming you guys can also still run the thing, so that's fine. Uh, all right. So we've got our bird. When you press space, it jumps. <laughs> um, so what next? Uh, well, we can add a background, right? So we're just going to call this background sky. Um, and then we're going to find the sky background somewhere here. Open that. So this is going to be the, the background in the room. If you actually play the game, it doesn't move ever. So I'm just going to go to tiles and click a bunch of these guys at the bottom um, as much as we need to, to fill up the whole space, which is that much. Cool. Um, so then we're going to click over here, go to backgrounds, and we're going to change the color um, to be this, this blue color from, from the background. Uh, well, that doesn't look so good. <laughs> so let's try that one more time. Mm, you get the idea. Um, so that's the, the background there. Uh, so now we're going to load the ground. Um, so it's called land over here. So we're just going to call this S land. And actually, in this case, if you look at the preview of it, it hides the ground. So what you want to do is uncheck transparent so that it fills in the ground. Um, so then we've got the land. 
we're going to make an O land thing. Select land. Cool. Um, and then we can, we can place this in the room the same way we've been doing everything else. You just sort of throw it at the bottom. And now it's starting to look more like the actual game, which is cool. Um, so that's good. All right, so the next part about the bird is, well, while it's falling, it sort of like starts to drop, right? So we can actually programmatically make that animation. Um, so we're going to make this thing called target angle, which is going to be like the angle that we want the bird to move to. Um, and then we're going to add a new event for step. And then in the step event, so step is this thing that sort of happens every frame of the game. So it's just constantly updating and running. Um, so there's this property called image angle, which is like the rotation of the sprite. So we can just set it to negative V speed, right? So now as I'm jumping, it'll be, I'm not even going to bother running it, but <laughs> as I'm, as I'm jumping, the bird will set its, its position to sort of like fly. Um, it makes it look a little bit better. Um, should I try running it or is it not worth it? <laughs> All right, we'll try. Wow. <laughs> there's, there's no right answer here. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Well, if you run that, you can see it's kind of it's kind of like a jumpy animation. Um, so, if you actually play the game for long enough, you can see that it, it moves up way slower than it moves down. So that's actually something that we can we can program in as part of the animation. Um, so the way to do that is we can say if we're moving upwards. Then we're going to set the image angle to negative v speed, um, which is sort of this like slower animation. But if we're moving downwards, which is this else block, um, then we're going to set the image angle to be negative v speed times four. So it's going to it's going to start to move down a bunch more. Um, and you can also do this thing to make sure that it never goes past ninety degrees. Um, so we want to choose the smaller of the two being V speed times four or 90. Um, so that way it'll always like stop when it's, it's facing downwards. Um, so that's the, the core mechanic of the bird moving is just that, um, pretty much. So the next part of the game is we've got to draw the score and we've got to like get things to move. So. One way you might be thinking is, OK, well, why don't we move the bird through this world? Well, actually, a lot of the time, it's more so that things are moving towards you, and it's more of just like this illusion um, that you're moving. So that's, that's what we'll do. So we're going to make this thing called O game, which is sort of this like control object that's just going to handle a lot of that logic. And I'm going to place him in the room. So now his job will be to move the land and to move the pipes and create new pipes. Um, so we've got this, this O game. So first I'm going to just import that sprite. Um, so we're going to call this S font. Um, so you, you, can, you can make images fonts too, which is pretty cool. Um, so just going to load in all these. It should look like this, 0 through 9. Right. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> right. So we're going <laughs> to make this thing. Um, okay. Uh, 
man, this is terrible. I'm sorry, guys. All right, we start that. <laughs> Cool. All right. So back to where we were, right? So new event, create. So when the game gets started, we're going to create this thing called a font sprite. So font um, add sprite. Then we're going to say, OK, BS font, which is that font that we had defined. Then you've got to say a couple other things, meaning the first character in this font, the thing true, and how much separation to put in between them. Um, so this is going to be ORD and then zero in quotes. So this will say the font starts at the letter, at the character zero. Um, and then we're going to add a new event. So when we draw, we're going to do a bunch of stuff. So we're going to say draw set color white. Um, draw set uh, horizontal align. Um, I forget what it is, so we'll just comment that out for now. Um, and then we're going to say draw text at room width over 2 um, at about room height times 0.2, so 20%. And then we're just going to draw whatever the score is. So We've got to actually create that variable score. Um, so we're going to do a thing called score equals 0. So now um, when we draw that, it'll do that. I'm just going to check real quick. Um, what is that? Draw set h align. So if you don't use these docs, you should, because they're great. Um, they've got pretty much everything. So that's the thing that we need. So we're going to say draw set h align uh, <laughs> fa middle is the way to do it. And so that'll that'll vertically center, uh, horizontally center the text. Uh, oh, wait, I, I flipped that. Sorry. It's fa center is the way to do it. So all right. So now that'll draw the score 20% high, half of the room, um, and it'll draw it as white. The other thing to do is notice this depth parameter. So negative values are closer towards the user. Um, larger values are further into the screen. If you could imagine, it's like sort of this z-axis. So we can just set it to like always be on top. So we're just going to make it negative a lot of nines. Um, so then that'll, that'll draw our score. <clears throat> so now we've got to tell it to move the land, right? So we're going to add this event. That happens all the time, being that step thing. Um, and we're going to just add some code here. So we're just going to say with oland. So now anything inside these brackets actually happens if you're the land only. And it won't happen inside this code uh, or inside the O game, which is kind of cool. So we're going to move the land by two pixels or something. Um, so now if you <laughs> run that, um, if I could, I would. But you'd see that the ground is moving to the left. Um, so that happens. Um, <laughs> cool. So now we've got to tell it to, to create these sort of like pairs of pipes every once in a while. And then we've also got to set the bird so when it collides with one of the pipes, it dies. Um, so we can do the, the colliding stuff first. So the easiest way to do that is you make this sort of like uh, base class, um, or just this thing that represents something bad, right? So I'm going to check this solid box. This is our death object. <laughs> um, and then so we go to these pipes. Uh, I'm going to set this to that. And then I'm going to check solid on the pipe as well. And then you can do the same for the down pipe, solid. Um, and then down here where it says parent, just select O death. 
So that'll allow us to set up a collision between this, this sort of thing that can kill you um, without necessarily putting the collision between both types of pipes. So then we're going to say, OK, well, when we collide with something that should kill us, um, we can say dead equals true. <laughs> um, so, well, right now, being dead means nothing. So we're going to add some behavior to that. So we're going to say, all right, I start out alive, meaning not dead. Um, and I can only jump if my y value is greater than 0, meaning I'm on the screen from the top, and I'm not dead. Um, and the braces are optional, but I just like them. So that's the, the way to do that. Um, and so now when we collide with this, this death thing and it sets dead to true, we won't be able to jump anymore, and then we'll sort of just fall to our death. <laughs> um, so then what you'd also do is um, we can say, you know, uh, because nothing's really moving, but when you die, we want the bird to sort of like stay on the land. So we're going to say if o bird dot dead, then we're also going to move him by the same speed as the whole game. So, so things are moving towards the left. Um, cool. So that's that. Um, then we want, so we also want the player to die when he hits the land. So we can add another thing like that. Um, oh, yeah, and make sure to make the bird solid. So solid objects can collide with each other. So then we're going to just attach some more things to that, and we're just going to say dead equals true. Um, and you can have him like, like, sort of like do that die animation if you wanted to. Um, by just doing like v speed equals you know some upward speed, which would make it look like he's like, <laughs> um, but I don't want that, so I'm going to comment that out. Oh yeah, and so right now the bird's like flapping all the time, because what happens when we're running this game is our bird sort of is just doing this animation repeatedly, right? But we only want him to flap when you're pressing space and not when you're not pressing space. Um, so the way to do that is, uh, okay, I'm just going to save, reopen. I don't know why this is so fickle. All right, reopen that. Um, so right, so GameMaker has these a bunch of built-in properties, but one of them is image speed. And so that says, like, how quickly do you cycle through every frame? I think by default, it's like 10 or something. So we're going to start out with image speed 0. And when we press space, we're going to also say, OK, now move the image. Um, as you normally would. Or, so you, changing this variable will change how quickly the image cycles through. I don't really know, so I'm just going to say 5 is slower. 1, I think, is a lot faster. Um, and then we're going to add a new event. So when this animation's over, we're going to say, OK, now set image speed back to 0. So it'll go through the animation once, and then after the animation stops, it won't run it anymore. So you get that, like, flap effect when you when you hit space. Um, how's everyone doing? Are we, are we following along? Thumbs up, thumbs down? So, so step, um, so we said that create happens like when the game first starts and this runs once. So step actually gets executed every frame. So this game, if you look at your room, is actually running at 30 frames per second which is set down here, which is a pretty standard frame rate. Um, some games like you know on Xbox run at like 60 frames a second. But for this game, it's just a simple 2D game. It's probably overkill. So 30 frames a second, this step event and any other step event gets executed. Um, so this is what allows us to do this like continuous animation code. Um, While you're playing the game, yeah. Um, and then the thing is, you can actually, like, so you can do keyboard detection in step. Some people say that's actually better. But um, 
cool. So we've got our bird. He can flap. He can die. Um, but he can't earn points right now. And also, no pipes get created or move. Um, so we can, we can move the pipes the same way we've been moving all the other stuff. So we're going to say, you know, OK, so with, oh, actually, this should have been obird.x. So we can say with o pipe. Um, and then we're going to create this new sort of like o pipe shadow thing, which is completely empty. Um, but if we make both of the pipes inherit from it, then they also get that behavior. Oh, OK, so we have o death, which does that already. Um, so never mind, we don't need that. But uh, yeah. But um, so we can we can use that o death, and we can just animate all of those things at the same time. Um, so we're going to also subtract it by two. And again, changing this like to a higher value would make it go a lot faster. Um, but I think two is about a good speed. I don't know. Um, so this will this will move all the pipes to the left the same way that everything else is moving. Um, so really, the last thing that we need to do is to give the player points and to create these pipes dynamically. Um, because the, the Flappy Bird levels aren't like hand placed, although you could do it. right? We could go into our room, um, make it much larger, and then add pipes if we wanted to um, in a very specific style. Um, but for Flappy Bird, the pipes are created dynamically. So we're just going to create some sort of like pipe counter. And I'm going to set it to 0, meaning create a pipe right away. Um, and then we're going to create another thing called, uh, well, this actually might be good to use alarms. Uh, <laughs> OK, so we can do this with alarms. Um, so we're going to say alarm 0 equals 0, so or 1. So what this means is run alarm 0 in one frame. Um, so now we're going to add a new event called alarm zero. And alarms are sort of good for like timing things. So in this case, we want to create a pipe on some sort of regular interval. So <clears throat> in our timer, we're going to say, OK, reset yourself to, um, well, if we wanted to create one pipe every second, that would be 30, because it's 30, 30 frames per second. So, But we could do room speed times however many pipes per second we wanted to create. So, so say we wanted to create one pipe every two seconds. That's what that would be. Um, I'm not sure what the actual game does, so you would have to play around with that number. But so now, every time this alarm gets hit, we're going to create those two pipes at some random height. So to do that, we need to first know, um, well, what height are we creating things between? So we're going to look at where our land is. So we're going to say height equals o land dot y. So this is sort of like the bottom. Like we never can create a pipe below this point. Um, so we could call this max height if we wanted to. That might make more sense. Um, so then in our alarm code, we're going to create a pipe between these two points. Um, so we're going to the way to do that is instance create. Um, and you can kind of just tell it like where you want to put the thing. So in this case, we want to create it all the way to the right of the screen so that it sort of comes onto the screen, which would be room width. Right? So, so it'll start out, and you can't see it. Um, the y value, we can actually just randomly choose. So we can say, all right, so create this random y thing. And so random will return, if you give it like 100, it'll return anything from 0 to 99, I believe. Um, so we want to create this um, between 0 and max height. And then we're going to add some padding, because that might not be perfect. You know, So the pipes have height too, right? So um, what's the height of one pipe is 26 pixels. So we never want to be less than 26 pixels, and then times 2 because there's two pipes. Um, so we're going we're gonna to create a pipe at that height. So this is going to be our, our open pipe. And then we say just O pipe 
uh, down. So this is going to be the top one. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. So create a new pipe as well. Um, and then this is sort of like the gap size, right? So whatever we put here, we would also have to fill factor into, so I'm going to call it gap size. Um, again, a thing that you can tweak. So I'm just going to add it to our create. So say I want 100 pixels space between each pipe. Um, again, I don't know what the actual thing is. Not hard to find out. So minus our gap size. And then we're going to say YY plus gap size. Um, and then this is going to be our O pipe up. Um, so now every two seconds, this will create like these two sets of pipes at some random height. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to the level generation. And it's possible that there's something wrong with this. I just can't test it right now. Um, so uh, the last thing is just giving the player points, right? So when do we give somebody points? Um, let me pull up an image. No, no Game Maker. Yes, there is Floppy Bird in Game Maker. You could download that if you'd like. Um, Sorry for the live stream people, you can't see this. Um, but so if you can imagine like some sort of imaginary line between these two pipes, right? So like as soon as I pass the middle of both of them is when I get these extra points. Actually, the bird starts a little bit to the left. So if you wanted to, you could, you could slide them over to the left too. Um, other thing is the bird probably looks a little funny in the, the flap animation. So if you want the animation to be so when we're rotating it, you can rotate it about the center of the sprite by clicking this button. So the origin is where the, the rotation happens about. Um, so we click center, so the animation looks better. Um, so back to the scoring part. Um, we can say, you know, if obird.x. Well, the bird's never moving, right? So what we need to do is actually check um, if he passes one of those pipes. In this case, just to keep it simple, we could probably just give you an extra point for every pipe. Um, you can do it with like passing through the pipes, but because I can't test it right now, I'm not sure what the exact solution is. Um, so we can just say um, if O oh bird, so if the player is not dead, um, give you some extra points. Um, so yeah, so we, we've got most of the things here. The last thing to do is maybe just make it so that the game can restart every time you die. Um, so one way to do that is in the game, we can just add a new event. So when we press space, um, yeah, we want to just check um, if the bird is dead. Um, you can do this thing called room restart, which will restart the current room. And so this restarts the level effectively. Um, and if you wanted to, there's like a lot more that you can add to even this seemingly simple game. but. I think that's about it. I'll stick around if anyone has questions or needs help making more stuff. But yeah, well, thanks for being here, guys. Let's see if it'll let me run the other one. I'm just going to restart my computer because I'm, ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> Right, so this is not the one that I have been making, but this is the one that I had made beforehand. <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the ground isn't perfect. Um, the way to fix that is what you actually do is you have two grounds, and you like shift them to the left. When this one goes off the screen, you bump it to the other side. So it's sort of like this, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, a good analogy. But that's how you would do the ground animation. Um, and if I had more time, I would do that. I can, I can show you guys whatever. Cool. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, uh, any questions? What are your questions? Cool. Yeah. So if you wanted to do this at home, is there like uh, like a website that would like do this? I don't know. So so Flappy Bird in particular? Oh, yeah, or any. So so the thing with, with making any game is it's just gonna take a lot of time, right? So um, the forms are good. You can also shoot me Facebook messages if you get stuck. Um, there are a bunch of tutorials on YouTube if you prefer like watching and following along. Um, I find that the best way to learn is by looking at other people's games. So that was one of the most useful things to me. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of stuff out there. The best thing is this form called gmc.yoyogames.com. Um, and so you can kind of go down into this programming Q&A, and they've got you know, a bunch of people that are going to answer your questions on whatever. Um, I spent a lot of time on these forms. <laughs> Do you want me to just close them? Um, <laughs> yeah, I can, OK. Bye, guys.